Uh, Minister, recent uh, media coverage of robberies and burglaries and the assaults of, of women in rural areas uh, creates widespread fear and insecurity, uh, and particularly for uh, older people uh, in rural areas. Now, we can only provide reassurance when the Gardaí are given the resources. And look, I accept that we cannot have a Garda at every crossroads, but we do need to see a visible community policing presence across this country. Thank you, Hirak, and I thank Deputy Nocton for raising the very, very important question around the enhancing policing in rural communities. And I echo the words of Minister McEntee, and I would like to extend my best wishes to the victims and the families of recent horrific attacks in this country. We hope those that are responsible are brought to justice and made accountable for their actions. As the Deputy is aware, a key pillar of the programme for government, our shared future, is building stronger and safer communities. Prioritising visible policing in rural and urban communities will ensure community policing is at the forefront of our police service and an integral strand of our social contract with the public. I am very conscious of the impact of serious crime can have on rural communities. I can assure the Deputy that I am committed to ensuring that there is a strong, visible community policing right across rural Ireland. That is why we have increased the funding allocated to Angorda Siakona year on year with a non precedented figure of over €2 billion Euros provided for in Budget 2022. This funding will allow for recruitment of up to 800 new Garda members and an additional 400 new staff. As of the 31st of January, there were 14,354 members of Angorda Siakona, an increase of 12% since the end of 15. This year's recruitment will bring us close to the government's target of 15,000 sworn Garda members, while acknowledging that there has been some unavoidable decreases in recent in certain areas as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the consistent increases in Garda numbers over recent years has led to a sustained strengthening of Garda presence on the ground right across Ireland in both rural and urban areas. In addition to new recruits, the rollout of the new Garda operating model will support the redeployment of Garda from non-core duties to frontline policing across the country. The new model will see larger divisions with more resources, increased Garda visibility in communities, a wider range of locally delivered policing services and a strong focus on community policing. As of the 31st of December 2021, 844 Garda members have been released from posts not requiring Garda powers or expertise and their duties reassigned to Garda staff. This has in turn facilitated the redeployment of Garda members to operational duties and the civilianisation and redeployment process will continue this year and the Commission has indicated a target of an additional 170 redeployments throughout 2022. Thanks, uh, Minister. Uh, and look, I welcome the fact that there are going to be 800 new Garda recruited into Angarda Siakana. But my question to you is, how many of those uh, are going to end up in Roscommon, uh, Longford uh, and Mayo? As I raised with the Minister for Justice here before Christmas, uh, on occasion we've had a situation where in half of County Roscommon we've only had one member of Angartha Siakana uh, policing an area that runs from Bally League uh, on the Longford border uh, to Bandeslow uh, on the Galway border. Uh, in the past three years, 25 Gardaí have left that district through promotion, transfer, retirement and not one of them uh, have been replaced. And it's this, this situation is replicated uh, in Castle district, in County Longford and across Mayo. Right from Loch Gowna to Black Sod Bay, we're seeing a replication of this. And we do not have the resources within the D uh, operational units of Angartha Sheena Corner right across uh, this very large division. Thank you, Herlock. As of the 31st of January 2022, the latest day for which fingers are available, there are 298 Garda members assigned to Roscommon Longford Division, of whom 92 were assigned to the Longford District. These figures represent an increase of over 2% in the Roscommon Longford Division, specifically since December 2015, and an increase of almost 10% for the Longford District in the same period. Garda members of the division are supported by 44 Garda staff, which is an increase of over 69% since the end of 2015, when there were 26 Garda staff uh, assigned to the division. As I stated already, additional Garda staff allow existing Garda to be redeployed onto the ground. Obviously, the, the disbursement of a Garda shape on it throughout the country is a matter for the Garda Commissioner and to, and to the relevant Chief Superintendents as well. The, the fact is that the Garda units uh, in the districts across this very large division uh, have gone from units of seven and eight members down to units of three and four members. And we have had instances in the past where we have had 
one member of Angarda Shia Khanna available for a very large district. That's the reality. That's what's happening on the ground. Now, can I ask you, Minister, the Joint Directors Committee produced a report back in 2019 uh, specifically looking at areas of rural policing. One of the recommendations that they, they made was that there would be a, a dedicated officer assigned as an initial point of contact for each rural community across the country, complementing the recommendation of the Commission on the Future of Policing in its 2018 report uh, in relation to uh, district community policing. What efforts are being made to implement that recommendation? Because at least if communities had a named individual that they could make contact with, it would help to provide some level of reassurance. Thank you, Kehirla. The recommendations continue to be under review, but the new divisional model as well will be implementing a, a significant number of those recommendations. But again, the actual deployment of Angarda Shia Khan and whether they're designated as community guardie or where they're assigned within a particular division is a matter for the Chief Superintendent as an operational matter. Thank you.